Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. So you've got good legs, Warwick? Well, when I shave them, yeah. Do you think they're good enough to uh, take a pair of pink boots? <laughs> I kind of dropped myself in it in this you episode. You really do. <laughs> and you know it's going to happen. I, I reckon I, I'd rock a pair of pink work boots. Well, you'd certainly draw some attention. I wonder if I could wear them to the gym. Uh, you'd probably fit okay at the gym <laughs> in your pink <laughs> boots. Do you wear boots at the gym? No, no. But uh, a pair of pink boots, stubbies and a Jackie Howe? Yep. There you go, all right. That, now, <laughs> keep your eye on social media for that. It's coming, I promise. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Uh, in case you hadn't figured, we're talking about shoes. dressing in drag. No, 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 shoes. <laughs> um, workwear and, uh, and, and women's specific workwear, which is a thing. It is a thing. Of course it's a thing. And I'll be honest, I hadn't even really given it a thought... Like I've I've known about the Shewear brand, and so today we chat with Stacey from Shewear, the founder. Um, I've known about the brand for a little while, but I actually didn't sort of just apply my brain to it and go, "Oh yeah, chicks don't really sort of wear dudes' boots and stuff because they're for men's feet." Yeah, it's all cut wrong. It's uncomfortable. It's heavy, and we're built a bit differently. So, just a little uh, bit. so yeah, we um we have a chat to the lady who started Shewear, um, who's got an interesting past and uh just come back from london uh without an accent and 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 just talks a bit about why she started the company and i guess uh you know what she's seeing out in the marketplace we talk about sexism and all sorts of cool stuff in today's episode jam-packed i think you'll enjoy it so check it out and uh keep an eye out for was wearing pink work boots it's coming to a (laughs) social media account near you (laughs) hey was hey coxie how are you Good. That was a bit awkward, wasn't it? Oh, come on. Is this better? It is, I'm actually. I'm practicing my intro. It's it's like makeup for weddings. You have to put way more on than you think because in the photos and TV's the same. So, you wear makeup? All the time. Mm, that explains a lot. Anyway, it's, we're not here to talk about makeup. That's why I look so good. <laughs> we're here to talk to today's <laughs> guest, who we were just chatting with, has not long returned from London. Hi, Stacey from SheWear. Hi, guys. How Hi, are Stacey. you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Now, uh, I'm not picking up any accents, so you obviously <laughs> weren't in London for very long. No, it wasn't there too long. I still have the old uh, Aussie <laughs> Aussie acronyms going, so no, <laughs> definitely no here. <laughs> did you, did you uh, notice or, or do people still notice Australians abroad? Like does our accent stick out more when you're not surrounded by other Ocker-speaking Aussies? Absolutely, and I think you're really conscious about it where you try and speak a little bit more proper. But the thing I love over in the UK, you walk in and they go, oh, you're right. Yes, (laughs) isn't it weird? They all say it and it's just bizarre. As soon as you say, yes, I'm fine, thank you. Oh, you're Australian. My sister's cousin lives in Sydney. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) We're, We're migrating to Australia next year. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah. all the time. Absolutely. Can you give us any pointers? Yeah. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Or do you know Tom? He moved to Brisbane <laughs> about six months ago and, you know, no, we're not actually that Like small. there's only 20 people here. It's like, <laughs> oh, you might know Mary from up the yeah. road. Yeah, yeah, You have a kangaroo pet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a koala in the tree. There's uh, a little bit behind the times over there, I think. Mm, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, Stacey, tell us about you, what you do. Why are you here today? Uh, I am the founder of SheWear and we manufacture and retail a range of safety footwear for women. Mm-hmm. I'm so. a long time convert. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So we're yeah. going to talk about women's shoes today, is that yeah. right? Yeah, yay yeah. for women's shoes. Oh, just excuse yeah. me while I drink my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not careful, we'll bring handbags in as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, we can talk handbags as well. That's no problem. They women's are, tool no, belts. I, have you got a line of women's tool belts yet? No, we don't. There are some out there, but we don't oh. manufacture. But yeah, there's some pretty cool tool belts out there. But um, I'm happy to endorse one. Is if most you... important thing. <laughs> yeah, right. I think. 
than the woman side of it. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Sorry, I've I've really lowered the tone. Well, is it possible to lower the tone of our Not podcast any further? I Not doubt. with you. Not with me on the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Sorry, Stacey. Shocking. Broad shot. <laughs> So, <laughs> so you are um, the brains behind SheWear, uh, which I only just recently discovered your brand, actually. I, I, and it wasn't through the podcast. I've seen it around. So um, I was fascinated uh, when Coxie said that we were going to chat to you on the show today. So um, it is very interesting. Cause it I, is. I, I just, it's been a bit of pride. Yeah, I bet. I, I just didn't really think as a, as a typical ignorant man – that it would be so hard for women to find, uh, not appropriate, but, you know, comfortable um, PPE, basically, like foot yeah. safety footwear and clothing. It's a massive issue and there, there's such an increase in women in trades and in construction and, and DIY as well. So there's obviously a lot of women doing those things now and, you know, we're, we're different. We've mm. just got different things men so a lot of the female boots still in the market are designed for a man made maybe two sizes smaller so they're still not a specific female fit Mm -hmm. so we design our boots structured around a female's foot not just a man's design made two sizes smaller so we've we've got a few points difference in market but i was property that's why i saw the need in the market Mm -hmm. so i was wearing uh, flip flops. I say thongs, depending on my market. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is an Australian um, uh, focused audience, so you can say pluggers exactly, if you want. Yeah. Yep. If I say that to an American, the yeah. look is completely. <laughs> I bet it is. <laughs> you wear thongs on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> That was shocking. Yeah. Well, I must come to your side if you're wearing a thong. <laughs> <laughs> So I couldn't find, uh, after that incident, nail through the foot, obviously a few issues with that, I tried to find a decent pair of work boots and I couldn't believe the lack of choice. Mm. So heavy, ill-fitting, ugly kind of came down the list, but it was still obviously there. So that's when the she wear story started. It's the weight of boots, men's boots that I hate. They're so heavy and I'm, you know, my legs are not designed for heavy boots. Do you kind of feel sorry yeah. for men now that you've worn men's boots? Yeah, I boots? do. Actually, we have this conversation <laughs> often about how so much of the PPE is designed for safety, but it's not designed for comfort. Yeah. We've forgotten yeah. about the poor buggers, male or female, on site, how yeah. hard they're working, and they're carrying all this extra weight that is unnecessary. Clomping around yes. in all this heavy gear, Absolutely. yeah. I would think up until recently, nobody's really thought about it. It's just the way it is. And it's probably, yeah. if I'm really honest, the way I see it anyway, is that it's this switch in focus to some of the women's wear that has mm-hmm. suddenly made the men think, well, hang on, how come I can't have a lighter boot? Yeah. yeah. Why isn't that technology coming to me as well? So I do yeah. see, you know, from my point of view, a big change at or the moment. Or tighter pants. I see a lot of young tradies wearing the whole, <laughs> you know, the, the like stove pipe um, yeah. pants. That's a very new fashion. It's interesting fashion. I will one. I will never pick up that fashion. <laughs> yes, but you're wearing Jackie Howe, so they're probably looking at you and thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> What are we doing here? How's Jackie Howe, stubbies and sock protectors over my boots. How did that even become a thing? It's always been a Ooh, thing. Terrible. <laughs> comfort. Comfort is key. Well, yeah, that's yeah. very true. I just I just never wanted to get under the ladder when I was labouring for my dad because like, Dad, <laughs> can you wear tighter shorts, please? <laughs> oh, oh, now you really man. have lowered the tone. Anyway, back to women's <laughs> <laughs> back to women's shoes. He's trying to change the topic from women's shoes. Yeah, of course yeah, he is. Yeah. Of course he is. No, trust me, I'm happy to talk about women's shoes. I'm scarred for life. <laughs> oh, I'll hit you with my handbag if you're not careful. Yeah, yeah. It's careful of those stereotypes. So, Stacey, <laughs> you were a property developer. You you uh, injured yourself. You thought, whoops, um, better wear some PPE. It was all rubbish because it was for men. Um, how do you go from that to where you are now? Yeah, it's been a bit of a journey. So that would have been, so the light bulb moment, I guess, happened about eight years ago. So made a pact to myself after talking about it for about 18 months, you know, this is ridiculous, you know, talking to other women as well. So I I took about 10 months of researching designs, speaking to factories, building prototypes, traveling, uh, yeah, and then 10 months later launched to the market as purely an e-commerce business uh, home-based. I had boots in every room of my house <laughs> <laughs> and had a little garage that I converted into an office and just started as an e-commerce business. And then a couple of months later, we had the women on the block wear our boots and that kind of put us into a different stratosphere, mm. I guess. Yeah. Market. 
obviously. We weren't an official sponsor, but, you know, coloured work boots do stand out and yes. the men just have the, the everyday ground boots. How did you How um, did you get onto? was that just accidental or was that something you actually aimed for? It was something I did aim for, but one thing I've found when you've got a product that is unique in its space, it's speaking to the right person. Mm. Yeah. So you might speak to someone, and I get lots of it, and still to this day, blank looks that's not needed. You know, I still get the women don't need work boots or pink work boots, that's ridiculous. I still get it to this day, less, but it's still around. Yep. Uh, so if you speak to the right person who gets it, mm. it, it creates a completely different journey. So that that's basically what happened. I spoke to the right person. And it was the right time because they hadn't had any contracts for their workwear and footwear. So hmm. uh, probably the stars were aligned. Let's yeah, put it yeah. that way. Yeah. So yeah, it's nice. a steep learning curve from being a property developer to manufacturing and selling shoes from your home. Oh, look, yeah, it's yeah, it's been mind-blowing really just the Australian standards for a start to get mm. a grasp of that. So obviously all of our boots are tested to the standards mm-hmm. and I have certifiers also that travel to the factory just to make sure that, you know, every boot is made correctly mm-hmm. uh, and obviously safely. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we want to be known for safety and for comfort and fit rather than colour or style. Yes. So that that's where our focus is. That the, the, Nothing wrong with having some style as well. So what sort of struggles did you find along the way? Was it, you know, I assume that in the beginning it would have been really hard to get the products accepted, to get people talking about it in a positive fashion. I know times have changed, but there's still a lot of sexism. So what kind of challenges did you find along the way? I guess one advantage in the early days was Facebook was really still easy to get that reach. Mm. So we started Facebook advertising before we even launched. So I had some products prototypes built would would go out there and say what do you think of these and that that built a little bit of of um brand awareness i guess from the start and mm-hmm. then obviously going on the block really helped but you know our first styles we still sell them but mm-hmm. we've come a long way in that five years so some challenges were really knowing what what is good and what's not good in, in a work boot so mm-hmm. also back in those days there were no such thing as government grants or government assistance mm-hmm. so you kind of were constantly against brick walls. You know, can someone help me with customs and quarantine? No, speak to this person, speak to this person. So it was a huge challenge in the early days without really knowing where to go. And all of our competitors are large multinationals. They're mm. not going to help you out. No. So it's kind of, she wears down here and then you've got the likes of West Farmers who own Hard Yakka and King G. So that there's a huge difference in the business mentality in yeah. the safety industry. So there have been lots of challenges, brand awareness, competition. We've actually had our boots completely copied by bigger brands. Mm. Um, lots of issues around copyright and infringements. So lo- lots of challenges, yeah. So that's a nightmare, yeah. copyright infringements. Now I can't say the word. Infringers, are, are, they're a nightmare to navigate. That That's a yeah. massive challenge. Yeah. There's, um, you know, obviously not going to talk about brand names. But <laughs> sure. Sure. Spoke for uh, they basically copied four of our designs like for like, took our logo off and put their logo on. Um, you know, intellectual property is is a gold mine, mm. as you can imagine. And being a small business, you have to accept. Do you just continually change and better your product? Yeah, and focus on what we're doing right, uh, or do you fight? I would love to fight, but I financially can't afford that. Yeah. IP lawyers, uh, I've, I've had uh, a couple of people that I know over the years in business go through some IP cases defending their own trademark and um, mm-hmm. I don't know what their rates are but they must be pretty high because the bills rack up so quickly. Mm. It's crazy amounts of money all to protect something that was yours in the first place that some twat came and stole essentially. And that's exactly what they are. I just, it dumbfounds me that someone can't be innovative and think of their own idea. Why you would need to buy, they've obviously purchased boots from us and then sent it to a factory and yeah. the colours are identical, like everything. So I went out there on our social media, we've got great loyal following and I, I never said the name and never will, but I basically went out and said, this is what happens. Be careful what you're buying. Yeah, yeah. Do a lot of research. And we had great feedback. Uh, and, you know, I think customers, if they know that you're really trying to be the change makers in the industry, they will support you. Mm. Yeah. No, that's a shame. So uh, you, you talk about loyal customers. I mean, what's mm-hmm. what's the take-up been like around the uh, the SheWear products? 
we've we've always focused on social media with our marketing and, and as i said when we launched it was back in those days that facebook was easy to reach however many followers you had so we've always focused on on that we've got in excess of 30,000 followers on our our social media channels now so we do have quite a good following yeah cool um so we do a lot of Facebook advertising mm-hmm. and what we also do is use our customers in our advertising. So we're, mm. we're very fortunate that we're always tagged in photos. So we'll put little video clips together and it's all an empowering message about if you really want to do something, just go out and do it mm-hmm. regardless, of gender, regardless of what you want to do. So that's a really big part of our brand is that motivational message, I guess, is, you know what, you want a pair of work boots, you want to do that, just do it. Nice. So, the fact we have great customer base, it's, it's really cool to put a video together and you're seeing these women doing amazing things. Um, you know, one will be a truck driver, a traffic controller, a geologist, a miner. There's just, yeah, some fantastic, some fantastic. <laughs> we, we won't uh, let everybody listen to the number that's calling in. <laughs> Call from uh, your mum. Uh, <laughs> Probably my dog's checking when I'll be home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mine's probably eating my cabbages again. Um, <laughs> it's it does. Uh, it's not that it surprises me, but um, I'm I'm probably well. I'm encouraged by uh, what I do see on social media, which is more and more and more um, tradey ladies who mm-hmm. are active in the trades, and I've known it for many years. I mean, it's it's not. A new thing but I think it's becoming much more public um, and you know even even some of the social handles uh, of you know plaster w- women plasterers and builders and chippies and all that sort of stuff and you know they tag themselves as a particular um, yeah. you know, chick uh, and their trade and it's like it's it's kind of cool and I think as uh, as males or men I reckon there's some of us that are a bit jealous that I can't be, you know, Brisbane chippy bloke or something. Like it just, <laughs> it doesn't have the same ring to it, and no one really gives a toss anyway because I'm a chippy. Like, but uh, <laughs> us poor slighted men. Oh, you poor thing. But uh, but yeah, it seems like there is there is this proliferation of women entering the trades. I mean, is there more women entering the trades, or is it just it is becoming more widely accepted and publicised, Stacey? I think the ones that are out there are trying to encourage other women to to think of a trade. It's The numbers are still really small. Mm. And the biggest problem I think what's happening is they're getting into the trades but they're not staying in the trades. And that be education for everybody else. It might be, um, you know, not that we really want to talk about the whole sexist thing, but, you know, girls can really struggle. If they're 16 or 17 and not equipped with tools to deal with tools, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a tool to deal with the tools. Yeah. So I think that's a, a really big issue in is getting those girls through the trades. I met a fabulous young lady last week. She's 16 and doing a trade based apprenticeship, cabinet builder. And she has a fabulous work experience with uh, one of the biggest marinas down on the Gold Coast. And she's yeah. had great and really positive experience. Wow. So hopefully she will have the confidence to be able to talk to other young girls yes. to say, hey, look, this is my experience, give it a go. Yeah. And I think I think it is being more accepted so these women are more comfortable on social media to be able to, you know, shout out, look what I do, I'm doing something different, come along with the ride. Yeah, yeah. What do you think changed that conversation? Because it's really not that long ago that we weren't talking about the fact that there's women in trades or there's women like yourself that are working on site with the guys doing what they do. It's been a really slow and gradual conversation, but there has to have been a tipping point. Do you have any yeah. idea what the tipping point was? Probably social media, to be honest. Because yeah. when I flipped the property, so I did it for about six years, social media really wasn't around. So I think when – one of my favourite sayings is you can't be what you can't see. Yes. So if you can't see women in work boots or, in you know, doing whatever they want to do really, how do you know that you can be that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's why we share that message a lot because if girls can see that you can be whatever it is you want to be, um, they don't understand that the options are there. And a lot of it is from our education. We're not taught, you know, when I was at school, I had to do sewing. Woodworking wasn't a thing for females. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important that we, you know, show our young generation, Mm. men and women, Mm. that 
they have a passion for something, do it. And I think showing that there's role models before them really helps. So I think social media has been a lot to do with that shift. I think you're absolutely right. It's just the opportunity to peek into everyone's daily lives. And we don't, if you can't see it, you can't do it. You're absolutely right. And if I can see that um, Joanne down the road is is a chippy and she's enjoying her job and it's fun, suddenly the fact that I might like working with my hands means that I do have a pathway to follow. I've got somebody that I can get in contact with and ask some questions about or somebody just showing me that it's okay to do that as well. And I do think yeah. it because there were plenty of us doing it before, it's just that we didn't have that vehicle to tell people about what we were doing. And you're absolutely, absolutely right with social media. Now we tell everyone what we're doing every minute of the day. So it's really easy yeah. for young girls in particular, but I think anybody to find a path. It doesn't matter what we want to do there is someone now you can find that's already doing it or has done it or can help you find a way. And it's quite simple to find that contact now with social media. Absolutely. And I think women, by nature, we lack a little bit of confidence. Mm. So a man will go, yeah, I can do that. Where a woman probably needs to be shown that it's okay for her to do something a little bit different. She won't be ridiculed. Yes. Uh, So, you know, seeing, seeing strong women in work boots with with the tool and getting things done. I think it just gives girls that avenue to go, oh, well, she can do it. I can. Mm. So I I definitely think social media has been a big driver. Huge. What sort of plans have you got for the future, Stacey? Growth, I guess, is our biggest plan. So if you can plan for growth. But we're looking to enter the UK market. Mm -hmm. So we do sell globally from our e-commerce site. So we're based in Brisbane. Uh, and we uh, hold our stock here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're looking to really get into the UK market and hopefully the American market after that. So, yeah, it's exciting. I would think that there'd be some real challenges breaking into those foreign markets because they work so differently there than the way we work here in Australia. Is that something that you see as a challenge moving forward? Absolutely. And also the time zones are massive, especially with the UK. You know, we're we're completely opposite. So. Having also a trust in someone locally to be able to look after the brand, still send that same brand message. Mm-hmm. You know, you can only do so much halfway around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, yeah, logistics will be, will play a big part of it. So, you know, we're in that process. We have that confidence that it's a market that needs our product. Mm-hmm. So it's now how we enter it correctly. So there's lots going on behind the scenes. So and. Yeah, it's exciting, but it, it, there will be definitely different challenges than being here in Australia, that's for sure. Mm. Absolutely. Now, Stacey, I can see on the wall behind you there's a couple of uh, awards hanging there. Uh, can you can you tell us a little bit about those and uh, sort of what led to, well, what's the award? I, I remember the logo on there, uh, but I can't remember which award it is, and you've got two the same there. So um, what's behind those and, and what sort of went into winning those? Uh, so we've been quite lucky. We won a few awards. So some product awards. We, um, for three years in a row, were named one of the coolest companies in Australia. So that was... <laughs> That's awesome. It was a bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, I also won a couple of years ago Australian Small Business Champion Entrepreneur of the Year. So that's probably what you're seeing behind yep. me. So that yep. a, a huge shock, actually. So <laughs> um, we... We nominated in the small business category and they actually put me forward to that particular entrepreneurial category. So that was, yeah, wow. it was a lovely surprise. Uh, we've won some, um, yeah, other awards as well. Let me <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you about that too because it's, uh, and we've had a, a previous guest on the show talking about business awards and, um, you know, how they can help a business. And I guess for our listeners as well, um, or oh, a couple of things to know that you're an award-winning business, I think does give a lot of credibility, but, but also, um, I think comfort and trust for, for yeah. people looking at the brand, but for you and, and for SheWear, have they had a positive impact on the business or have they, you know, given you any sort of, uh, benefits or hookups along the way? Yeah, I think so. And I think the media are also um, more interested if, if there's a bit of a backstory, um, you know, especially with, say, an entrepreneurial award or um, the last one was a Women to Watch Award, which was a global innovation award. And I think if people know that you're doing something a little bit different, they do take a little bit more interest. Mm. Um, and, you know, to be seen, I guess, is 
market leader sounds a bit arrogant, but, you know, to be seen that you're doing something different to mm. the others is really important. And because awards are generally showcased about your unique proposition, uh, it just gives you that little bit of difference again into the media. So I think it helps with that. I think it's also a really good opportunity to sit down and see where you've come from. Mm. You know, it's very gloss over all the hard work. And I'm not really someone that sits there and will pat myself on the back or, or think about it to me. It's just work that you've got to do. Yep. Um, so I think sometimes it's nice to sit there and, and if you receive a nomination and then you have to actually put a submission forward, it makes you really think about it and realise, yeah, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. But you know what? It's actually rewarding to see how far you can come in five or six years. Yeah. yeah. So with all that hard work, Stacey, is that something you're doing all by yourself or do you have a good team around you? I have a team around me, which are great. So we have warehouse staff, we have customer service staff. So we really look after our customers and, you know, we're here for any kind of support. And again, you know, back into that empowering message as well. So we get quite often involved in women in trades, trade fairs and, and do a few sponsorships around that as well because we like to encourage women to do it. So I have a great team around me. I don't think you could do any kind of business without a good team. Totally agree. Oh, there's some people trying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Also support from friends, family and partners. I think if you don't have that, it's just impossible. Mm. Yeah. Those days yeah. you're going to be working 18 hours and your partner's going to understand that. Yes, <laughs> like definitely. it or lump it. Yeah. <laughs> you say that with a smile on your face, Stacey. So that sounds no, like you've lucky. got some experience there. <laughs> so we are, we are talking about the trades and, and trade uh, industries. I mean, what do you see as the future of, of trades in Australia or, or, you know, maybe where's it come from, where's it at now and where do you see it going to as another order comes in on the phone? <laughs> <That's great. laughs> We're so good for business. We want a thousand it's pairs always. of pink boots. <laughs> it's always the way. <laughs> um, with trade, look, I, I definitely think that more women will get into the trades mm. and obviously with um, machinery, it's – going to be even more available to I think a lot of women will think well I'm only small build or I'm not that mm, strong yep. and and let's be honest men are stronger than women physically no question about that but yep. if we work smarter it it can translate to working harder really yeah um, so you know I, I definitely think there will be more women entering the trades definitely mm. yeah Okay, and so we sort of touched on it before, and I want to go back to it. Um, you should do. <laughs> but uh, you know the whole sexism thing. Um, it it would be <laughs> well. It's I think it's easy sometimes to think down a certain path based on our own experience, and you know I know this is only a bit of a bit of uh, commentary between the three of us and our own personal observations, but you would talk to a lot more women in the trades than I certainly would and, and perhaps even than Coxie would. Um, do you think attitudes are, are improving at all? I mean, has, has it moved from where perhaps the media and some of the minority groups would have us believe that, you know, men are pigs and we treat women like crap and are constantly wolf whistling and everything? Or, or, you know, are we actually evolving as a race? Yeah, I, I think you are. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh, um, I feel so much better now. <laughs> there's definitely, but I must say, when I flipped properties, I was quite hands-on. I'm certainly no tradie, but I was very physical with my renovation. So I would do my own tiling and painting and a bit of brickwork and rendering, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So I was surrounded by men. Back then, I don't think I ever came across a female uh, tradie. Yep. And I never had any sexism towards me. They all utterly respected what I was doing mm. and treated me great. So firsthand, I actually never had any sexist comments or uncomfortable situations. Mm. Whether I'm lucky, I'm not too sure, but I encounter it more now in the safety industry than I did back in the training state. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the comments might be, you know, guys ribbing each other about pink boots or, or yeah. anything or you know, women don't need that. That's ridiculous. Mm. Or you go into a workwear store and the women's range is maybe one rack compared to 100 rack for men. Mm. And we speak to these stores and they say, well, we don't get women in here because women don't need it. Well, maybe you need to look at what's on the back. Women aren't feeling comfortable to come in here because you're not offering for them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
I think that will change. The major retailers probably really need to change, but you know they know their market, yep. and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm. But get women in their store; they need to be catering for women. Mm. But back to the sexism. Look, I think there actually has been a, a shift, and a lot of women that I speak to, there's good and there's bad experiences. Oh, Some wow. women will say that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the same with anything, but a lot of women will say the men are more than respectful. Then you, you'll hear the next story and it'll be that, you know, they don't cater for women with facilities or mm. they're being picked on or bullied or belittled because they don't have the physical strength. Yep. Um, but as I said, I, I think there is a change, but I've I've never encountered massive sexism back in the days when I was dealing with tradies. They were an amazing bunch of guys to deal with. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with that one. <laughs> I, and, um, I, I'd like to believe that little story. I, my experience isn't too far different, but I also put that down to a l- lot of me not accepting that either. Yeah. You know, if you're going to start, yeah. you can just, it's not effort Friday, so I won't say what I want to say. But, you know, it, I had a level that I wouldn't cross. And if you come close yeah. to that level, you're going to be told. And yeah. I was fortunate enough to be older when I started working yeah. heavily in the industry. So that made it maybe a little easier. I had a bit of confidence that I wouldn't have had at 16. Yeah. So my fear right. is for the younger girls coming through and just making sure that they have the tools to yeah. deal with that if it does become an issue. And I do think and on some bigger sites and things, we need to be catering to women, whereas right now we don't. Mm. Yes, I agree. Mm. I agree. And I also think, and, and you would be the same as me, Nick, I'm sure, is that you know I always took the effort to understand what they were doing and I, I learnt the terminology. Yes. Uh, I, I can be a bit of a control freak. It's probably not a great thing. <laughs> wanted to know how they were doing it and why they were doing it. And and I think that also helped as well. Definitely. It's really yeah. showing respect to them. And when yeah. you give it, you nearly always receive it back. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So, Stacey, what, um, what's your favourite product in your line? Oh, I should probably say my number one seller, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, your highest margin product. That's what you should plug. <laughs> <laughs> the pink zip lacer is our number one seller, but I like that in red is my personal choice. Right. So do a leopard print work boot, which I'm sure no other big company is going to copy because <laughs> most of them are scratching they, their head thinking, why would you make a leopard print work boot? Yeah, yeah. It sells really well, but it's a bit of fun. And that's mm. the whole point. Have a bit of fun with a very serious topic. Yep. yep. So, you know, our marketing is a bit cheeky as well. So uh, the leopard print's my favorite yeah nice nice now i have a question that uh i like to try and stump guests with it what it wasn't the intent when i first started asking it years ago but it's become a question that i always ask guests on the show (laughs) and i'm gonna i'm going to modify it a little bit today um because we are talking about lady tradies and she wear uh and so if you had a thousand lady tradies in a room what's one piece of advice you would just love to leave them with would love them to. Would love to leave them with. So what's one piece of advice you would give to a thousand lady tradies in a room, all wearing she wear, of course. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd probably tell them I love them first. But <laughs> nice. Advice, stick to your guns and don't listen to the naysayers because there's plenty of them out there. Prove them wrong. That's Prove great wrong. advice. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, now, uh, and, and I'm just going to stay in the driver's seat here and affirm this the stereotype. <laughs> what you do. Uh, the Tradies in Business podcast with Woz. Oh, and Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, where, where do people go? So if there's a, if there's a tradie out there, a bloke who's like, oh, I'm going to get my, you know, wife or partner or the young girl apprentice who's working in the workshop, um, I'm going to get them some she wear. Where should they go to uh, to find out more? And on that note, before I get there, <laughs> men actually wear she wear as well. So if you're a man size 10 or smaller, we can potentially fit you. <laughs> so hey. My awesome. builder mate, he's, I won't, actually I should say his name. Come on. I, no, I wait. He's on his <laughs> He's on his fifth pair. He's been wearing them for years and he absolutely loves them. So there you go. That's pink. a side note. Are they pink? Uh, no, he's not pink. He's a black. But that's oh. okay. I yeah. could see yeah. myself in a pair of pink work boots. I have no doubt you would wear them proudly. I'd rock a pair of pink work boots. Mm-hmm. What size shoe are you? Oh, I'm like an eight and a half. Perfect. Oh, so my you God. fit the criteria. Match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, th- I think so. My- our website is shewear.com.au. We also have a retail store in Northgate on the north side of Brisbane, uh, open by appointment. So people can give us a buzz like all these people are. <laughs> <laughs> Come and them on. We've also got some stockers throughout Australia and New Zealand as well. So all the info is on our website. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Well, Stacey, thanks so much for your time today. Um, it's been great to to chat to you and find out a little more about Shewear. As I said, I've known about the brand for a little while and I've seen lots of photos uh, on social media of your gear <laughs> on uh, on Lady Trady. So uh, well done. It's it's great to see, uh, I think, a shift in the industry and, you know, not to do with all the gender and all that stuff, but just yep. um, I think more about humans actually backing themselves, as, as you say, you know, have a go. If you want to do it, go and bloody do it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter That's if you're awesome. a boy or a girl or if you come from Melbourne yeah, or Sydney. Really. It's like just go do yep. what you want to do. So awesome. Great chatting to you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Stacey. Yes. So, Warwick, I've been hanging out about this week a bit, get my words right, a bit, about. (laughs) In the group, we've had some really cool conversations this week. Yeah. uh, I'm I'm actually quite humbled by the number of comments I see on people's posts with all of the help that's being offered. It's awesome, isn't it? You know, I, I see a question go up and I think, oh, I'll get back to that later and I'll help this person out in the Tradies in Business group on Facebook we're talking about. And uh, and I'll pop back an hour later to give them some insight or a tip or something about their question, whether it's to do with marketing or bookkeeping stuff or how to manage their cash flow or what to do if someone's not paying. And there'll be 15 comments from other tradies all going, oh, we tried this or, you know, do that or go to this site. It's like, I actually don't need to say anything. (laughs) No, I find it more and more often. And I find that probably my most favorite part is it's good quality advice. Like, you know. (laughs) It's not rubbish where I'm like, no, "No, don't say that. It's like, oh, yeah. What they all said. Yes. That's pretty much my comments. (laughs) Yes. I'm a member of quite a few tradie groups on Facebook and some of the advice is a little misleading shall yeah. we say or, yeah. or misguided maybe is a better way yeah. to say it because we're not experts we're business people you know so yeah, yeah. Yep. we're just talking about our experience and some of the stuff i see is really quite scary tradies and business group no nope, they're all over it all right so if uh, if you're listening to this episode and you're hanging out for the photos of me in pink work boots mm-hmm. go and join the train you've got to be in the group, group to find it <laughs> yeah there you go there's an incentive but uh, if you have people might leave they're not coming to join. They're going to go away. Mm, we might lose all the fellas at least. <laughs> um, we'll gain a few more. But, oh, don't go there. <laughs> so if you're not in the group, uh, you really are missing out. If you're a tradie and you're in business or you want to get into your own trade business, go and join Tradies in Business on Facebook. It's a closed group. So yes, you have to apply and that's to keep all the wombles out. Um, all the what? The Wombles. Oh, yes. I like Wombles. They were cute. Yeah, the Wombles of Wimbledon. I used to watch that show when I was younger. They were very cute. Uh, so, <laughs> so, no wankers allowed. Um, but go and join the group. Trade is in business on good old Stalkbook. Some fantastic conversations in there. And it's also a great place to find out what Coxie and I are up to with the podcast. Uh, we've got some events coming up. We've got some exciting partnerships um, that you'll hear more about in the group there. And uh, we'll start sharing these podcast episodes in there as well. So it's an easy place to find all of that too. But it's not just there. No. How about you pop over to the website? But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. We should put a picture of a steak knife on the website. <laughs> Come and find them. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> Look, if you haven't been over to tradiesandbusiness.com.au anytime soon, you really need to pop on over and check out the trade desk. Mm. What is the trade desk, Warwick? Well, it's where you go when you can't. When you don't know which aisle the thing is. That's that you're right. For. Where you go for your expert advice. Yeah. When you're Depending in Bunnings. on the store. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they're going to. Promise gonna, we're not like Bunnings. Is that trademarked? No. Should we have checked that first? No. Anyway, we've got our own trade desk. Um, and it's a good trade desk because it makes you money. It does make you money. Uh, but the trade desk is basically me and Coxie and 10 years each uh, working with people like you. Uh, and we've put together a whole bunch of. Valuable information, tips, guidance, there's uh, video training in there, there's templates and stuff you can download. Uh, what else is there? Oh, there's a there's a secret 
Facebook group, which is sort of not really secret, but um, <laughs> there's a bunch of other tradies in business who are implementing this stuff that you can bounce ideas off. We do uh, live Q&As on a regular basis, case studies, exclusive podcast content, and special deals from our partners. So I'm it's... exhausted listening it's, to all of that. Uh, we should probably charge about 500 bucks a month I for that. I think so. But uh, because we're idiots, we're charging $49 a month. Um, so Cheaper than a cup of coffee every day. Yep. Cup of coffee or a carton of beer, whatever your poison is. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, money back guarantee, no contracts. Uh, you can leave at any time. But why would you? Because it's amazing value. It's awesome. And you get to see us. Yeah. Hello. Anyway, it's really cool. Go and check it out. Um, there's a whole heap of info on the website, tradiesinbusiness.com.au. Would love to have you in there. And uh, that's about it from us, I think, isn't it? Hooroo. Hooroo. Hey, that's my line. I stole it. You've been listening to the Tradies in Business podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesinbusiness.com.au.